What's up everybody, Brian Tong here and this is my in-depth review for Apple's new 15 inch M2 MacBook Air and when you look at it, it's literally a larger screen version of the 13 inch M2 MacBook Air and the design here, you got the curves, the edges, the ports, uh, even the colors, right? Now Apple, they sent me this one. This is midnight and this one's for review. It's obviously gonna go right back to them, so don't worry. But this thing th still, it just feels classier than any other ultralight 15 inch laptop out there. And I've said it multiple times in my videos, this is the laptop that I've always wanted Apple to make and they finally did it. So let's talk about the key differences first and then I've been going deep testing this thing with real world tests and if you're wondering how it stacks up to Apple's other laptops, you know that I got you there too. Now when people ask me what laptop they should buy, the first place I tell everyone to start is the 13 inch M2 MacBook Air and if you want the ultimate content creation laptop, I'll tell you to look at the MacBook Pro first. If you want the best laptop for gaming, I'll tell you don't get a Mac, but it's Windows PCs that have really dominated this 15 inch ultralight space for years and now Apple's 15 inch M2 MacBook Air wants a piece of that pie and why not? It's currently the thinnest 15 inch laptop on the market today at 11.5 millimeters. It's just about 0.2 millimeters thicker than its 13 inch counterpart. So if I bring them up here and put them side by side, right? Here's the 13 inch M2 MacBook Air and you feel them, um, I mean, it, it's barely, it almost feels flush. You can't even see or really feel the difference. It is fractions of a millimeter thicker. Now the biggest difference here, well, that's gonna be pretty obvious. It has a 15.3 inch liquid retina display with the same pixel density and the same 500 nits brightness as the 13 inch Air. You got P3 wide color gamut support and Apple's True Tone technology. There's no ProMotion mini LED display here. That's only on the pros. And for people who don't like that, well, as a content creator who spends hours and hours on this thing. When I'm editing videos, I didn't even miss it because the display, it still looks great. Now you get the standard 1080p FaceTime camera here and then the notch will remind you it's an Apple laptop, love it or leave it. But if that's the reason that you are not taking it seriously, you're not paying attention and you know, I'm not gonna lie to you. Like, did I just say all that with a straight face? Yeah, I did. Now it's a combination really here of top tier performance. You got battery life that is excellent and near dead silent fan with Apple's M2 chip that is still unrivaled right now. I mean, this is the triple threat right here, power, battery, and quiet. And it's only outdone here by Apple's even higher level processors right now. Now this 15 inch M2 MacBook Air has an eight core CPU, 10 core GPU, supports up to 24 gigs of unified memory and then up to two terabytes of storage. Now we're gonna do a deep dive into its performance in a bit, but let's just point out everything here. You obviously get the MagSafe ports, right? I have to look and check. <laughs> you got the MagSafe 3 here, two Thunderbolt USB-C ports, and then on the flip side here, you're gonna get the 3.5 millimeter headphone jack. These are the same exact ports on the 13 inch MacBook Air, and then you have the touch ID scanner, that's gonna be obviously inside here, signature for Apple laptops, plus the 15 inch Air supports up to a single display at 6K resolution at a 60 Hertz refresh rate that you could connect to it. Now the question that I always get from you is does the midnight color still attract fingerprints? And look here, before I shot this video, I'm gonna show you what it looked like. And the answer is yes, it absolutely does. Within minutes, uh, fingerprints are everywhere, but it also still looks badass. I mean, this midnight, just wipe it down. It's nice and clean. I mean, come on, L look at this thing. It's nice. Now, if you don't like fingerprints, then look at Starlight, look at Silver. Those are your best bets. Or you can even look at Space Gray, which can show prints a little, but those are your options here. This thing here weighs in at 3.3 pounds. The weight is distributed really nicely. Um, that is 0.6 pounds heavier than the 13 inch M2 Air at 2.7 pounds. The other big change here, the other big change here that you notice is, I'm gonna open these up. You can't even see them here, but it's the speakers. Yes, these speakers on the 15 inch Air are incredible. So I'm gonna do you solid. And if you've seen my previous videos, you know that I use this special binaural microphone that allows you to hear exactly what it sounds like and how the sound is captured. So you can make your own judgment about how this sounds. 
So I'm comparing the 13 inch air to the 15 inch air at the same volume level with the same movie clip just so that you can hear the improvement and difference. And then we're gonna do the same with a music track. We're taking the whole case. We're taking Mags, the RPGs, the Stingers. Bro, let's go, come on. Luak, okay, let's go. Luak. Take that. Take this weapon, here boy, go. Luak. You don't even know how to use it. Dad taught me. So what did you think? You know, I'd love to hear your reactions in the comments because that's what they are for. For me, it is pretty easy to tell that there is more of a well-rounded sound and just more oomph and a deeper bass. Plus, you know, when listening with a laptop right in front of you, the Dolby Atmos spatial sound just comes alive even more. And this is going to apply to Apple Music tracks as well as movies that support it. The 15-inch Air with its extra space from its larger design has a total of six speakers. So there are two woofers and one tweeter on each side. That's versus the four speakers on the 13 inch that has just one tweeter and one woofer. It makes a real difference in Apple's improvement in audio for the laptops. I think over the past several years has been criminally underrated because Apple Silicon has just overshadowed it so much. Uh, but their sound improvements, I would say over the past, let's say three or four years has been so, so good. I mean, it's really that good. So. We've also seen here iFixit tear down this laptop and to no surprise, the other difference here is that it has a bigger battery that supports the bigger display. You're still getting the same estimated 18 hour battery life and I can make it through a work day with this, even editing videos, doing my normal tasks, emails, sending away, surfing the web with battery juice to spare. You know, if I'm just surfing the web, writing documents and messaging, I might even be able to squeeze two work days out of this thing. I mean, that's how good this is. So bottom line, the battery life is great. Okay, so we've talked all about that, but let's get to the performance stuff, right? So we're gonna check out the configuration that I have here from Apple compared to the 13 inch Air that we were putting it up against. This is the same processor and the 13 inch is fully loaded, maxed out unified memory, maxed out hard drive compared to the 16 gigs unified memory here and one terabyte storage option that Apple gave me for this review model. Now first, we're gonna start with the Geekbench 6 benchmarks just to give you a reference point here. I run these benchmarks 10 times and then average out the scores. And there are no surprises here comparing the new 15 inch Air with an M2 to the 13 inch Air with the same M2 chip inside. The 13 inch Air has a single core score of 2,642 and the 15 inch Air has a single core score of 2,635. Now for multi-core score performance, the 13 inch Air has a score of 10,024, while the 15 inch Air has a score of 10,020. So this is near identical performance here. Again, I run these tests 10 times. Now let's look at its metal score for measuring GPU performance. The 13 inch has a score of 45,792 versus the 15 inch with a score of 45,819. Again, no major disparity. It's nearly identical with scores that close and that's really expected. So here's a look 
had benchmarks from Apple's other models and I didn't have the latest M2 Max results because Geekbench, they recently updated to a new version six that has changed the scoring and comparisons from Geekbench five. So I'm not gonna include it until I run those tests on the machine like that. But just know that it has about 20% faster CPU scores and 30% faster GPU scores compared to the M1 Max scores. That is if we're talking about the M2 Max and really, M2 versus M1 along the different lines of processors, whether it's uh, the baseline, Pro, Max, and then Ultra. So look, everyone here talks about benchmarks, benchmarks. Those are nice numbers. Again, I just like to kind of set a foundation, but this really doesn't mean anything until you start showing off real world results. And that's what really matters to me, right? I'm a content creator, so this is more applicable, applicable and maybe how you can see how it's gonna work for you. So I do a variety of video export tests and I run them three times each to just get an average score. So let's just start with a 13 plus minute video with five layers of 4K video and five audio tracks in the latest version of Adobe Premiere Pro on Mac OS Ventura. The new 15 inch Air had an export time of nine minutes and 16 seconds, while the 13 inch Air had an average time of nine minutes and 26 seconds. And so obviously that is neck and neck, but it was consistent across every time I ran it. I'm guessing that the larger form factor with slightly better heat dissipation contributes to that slightly better result. Nothing like you like, oh, I gotta go get the 15, it's so much faster. And also a quick side note, Adobe, they get some major kudos here too because the previous test that I ran with the same 13 inch air from last year had an export time of nine minutes and 46 seconds for the same exact project. And all the Macs I have for testing have stayed pretty much the same or improved their premier export times from 2022 to now 2023, especially the longer video exports that you're gonna see. So I just love the focus on better optimization of Apple Silicon a year later. Sometimes it takes time for third party companies to keep on really optimizing that. Okay, now let's take a look here at some of the results from other Apple hardware just for comparison. And I'm only including models that I've been able to test with the current software since results have changed. And again, there's no M2 Max on this right now, but it will get added to my comparisons in the future. But just know that the M1 Max is so good and still so incredible for me as my main driver that I didn't feel the need to upgrade and really you don't need to upgrade your computer every year. Who, who does that other than maybe, maybe some tech YouTubers or people that have lots of money. Okay, I like to keep it real here. Now let's go for a bigger project, something bigger, like a whole lot bigger and export a 45 minute video in Premiere Pro that has about 20 video and 20 audio tracks, okay? This is a beast and the 15 inch Air exported it in one hour, seven minutes and 43 seconds. Now let's look at the 13 inch Air that did it in one hour, 23 minutes and 32 seconds. So there's about a 16 minute difference when you're dealing with a really large project that most people won't do. I mean, some of you might, I definitely do it once in a while, but that's the difference between the 13 inch air and the 15 inch air when it comes to these larger projects. And I gotta imagine again, the thermals and heat management with this larger form factor could be the biggest contributing factor there because everything else inside is the same. Now, another point of improvement again is with software because when I first did this test in 2022, I took that same 13 inch air. It took one hour, 35 minutes and 22 seconds to export the video. So in a year, with software optimizations, they've been able to cut off about 12 minutes on an export time for a very large project from what it used to be. And I just love being able to see improved results like that over time, companies care. Okay, now here's a look at other Apple hardware for a comparison point, just so you can see how they all did with this large project. And obviously, a video this size isn't something that a lot of people normally do, but it gives you a sense of what these machines are truly capable of. Okay, now, I say, let's, cra let's get crazy, right? You wanna get nuts? Let's get nuts, all right? Let's get to the business where we're doing a Final Cut Pro export. So this is with native Apple hardware tied to Apple software, right? This is a 15 minute video. It's an unboxing with four layers of 4K video and audio tracks. So uh, <laughs> just hold on to your butts here. And using the power of M2's dedicated built-in media engine, that is key, that just tears through video and I rave about it every chance that I can. The 15 inch MacBook Air exported this video in ProRes 422 high quality in one minute and 38 seconds. The 13 inch Air did it in one minute and 41 seconds. 
a three second difference, but this is a 15 minute video, my friends, with export times that I still can't get over it. They're still mind boggling. Uh, that is the power of Apple hardware and software working together. And I need to remind you that this is the M2, right? Apple's current generation entry level processor. Uh, <laughs> For those of you who are just getting started on your video editing journey, like you just you have no idea how freaking lucky you are. You just don't. And here's a look at how other machines performed. Yeah, it gets crazy. I mean, my M1 Max can export that video out in 55 seconds. So you can see why I don't feel a compelling reason to do any type of upgrade right now. So those are the real world tests and I'll be updating it with new results um, and the latest hardware throughout my videos as I get it, as I'm able to test them again. But the 15 inch MacBook Air starts at $1,299. Um, this is a killer, killer value if you're looking for a larger screen laptop with an M2 chip inside. The 13 inch Air now starts at $1,099 and that was previously $1,199. So for everyone out there, this 13, that 13 inch sweet spot, it just got even sweeter with an even more affordable starting price point and then M2 performance on top of that. Now, a lot of you have asked me, should I, go 13 inch or go for the 15 inch. And the only real reason you're doing that is because you just want a larger screen, really. I mean, some of you just have money to spend if you got the 13 inch last year, not me. But my rule has always been only buy a new computer when you actually need a new computer or if it just offers something you just gotta have or if you just have lots of money. Now the new speakers here, this is a great touch, um, but people aren't upgrading a new laptop because of speakers, they just aren't. And if I was in college today though, and I'm just speaking for myself right now, this 15 inch Air would 100% be the laptop for me because I was editing video in college. And the M2 is more than capable of handling all my video editing needs. It would be a no brainer. Now, if I wasn't a content creator, I'd get the 15 inch Air today, right? If I was starting out as a content creator, I'd also buy the 15 inch Air today. I'm the type of person that needs that bigger screen real estate. It's that good and it has headroom that is going to last, I would I would arguably say maybe 90 to 95% of people for a long time. I mean, I've always liked a larger display, even if I'm traveling a lot, watching movies while on a plane, the bigger the screen, the better. That's just my preference. And starting at 1299, I mean, you cannot beat that. Though I would say just for even more longevity, I'd at least put, at least, I'd say even more, but you know, for a general consumer, I'd at least put 512 gig store, solid state drive here, um, 16 gigs of unified memory in this, and that's gonna actually start at 1699. But again, you're still at 12 to nine, you're gonna, it's gonna be great. Now for someone who's doing email, web surfing, using Google Docs, Microsoft Office, and wants to do some photo editing and video editing, that is a killer machine for at least five years. I'm gonna sign my name on it, at least five years. So a fully loaded 15 inch M2 Air with 24 gigs of memory, and two terabytes of storage cost $24.99 or $2,499. I mean, that's the one that I would target as a creator. But this 15 inch MacBook Air is so good that I'm seriously considering it because it also weighs one and a half pounds lighter than my current 16 inch MacBook Pro uh, M1 Max it is a beast. I mean, it does everything for me. It's a powerhouse, but that weight, it makes a huge difference for me on the road. Even if I do, you know, I do work out, but it makes a difference. So. Okay, let's get back to you. And if anyone asks me, what laptop should I look at? Reality is I'm always gonna ask them right back, what do you wanna do, okay? But the conversation almost always starts first at the 13 inch MacBook Air and then goes from there unless your priority is gaming. You know, gaming, not all the games that are out there, this is not necessarily the platform for that yet. So the 15 inch MacBook Air, this is everything you expect it to be a bigger, 13 inch air with even just a tad bit better performance on um, the reliability, the performance, the battery life. It's a laptop I always wanted Apple to make and look, now they did it. So it's at the top of my list for an ultra thin consumer laptop that's gonna last you for years and it's also a great option for content creation at any level. And you know what? I'm gonna say it. That's a bad apple on you Apple for making me want a laptop that I don't need, but I really want. And you know what that really means? That's a good Apple. Yeah, it is uh, so good that I might end up getting one for myself by the end of the year. Like, don't, don't make me do it. Because 
the more I use this, right, the more I like, like, I can just like, I mean, I can almost throw it around. The more I, the more I look at, the more I use it, the more I want to do it, but I don't need it, but I still want it. So, uh, I'm just going to step away from this MacBook Air right now. I think that's the safe thing to do. I'm just, I'm going to leave you right here. Okay. Yeah. I'm going to go now. Yeah. I like that. I